First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus to stand in solidarity and faith with one another. No matter what happens or does not happen in Gainesville or New York or anywhere in the world, we have come together to join others across Ohio, our nation, and our world to stand as people of faith on the side of love. Our religious practices will vary, but we find common cause in the values of respect and peace. There is wisdom in all faith traditions. Denying that fact impoverishes, impoverishes us all. And at the beginning of our time together, let me offer the refrain of our age, that being to ask you to silence your cell phones. <laughs> we are thrilled you are here today on a game day, no less. So once again, welcome, friends and neighbors, welcome, one and all. Hi, I'm Mark Bellatini. I'm the senior minister of this congregation. Here on this late summer day, we gather together in simple peace. We come from different families, different backgrounds, from a variety of religious, spiritual, and even skeptical outlooks. We read different books and regard them with diverse understandings and sometimes distinct reverence. We may not share the same spiritual languages, but we do share, however, the power and the grace of peace and respect. We are here to build bridges not to put up walls. For we are all in this world together. There can be no outsiders in a world of peace and respect. Today is also the anniversary of an event in this nation in which thousands lost their lives nine years ago. And the diversity of those who died on that day was even greater than the diversity in this room right now. As Rabbi Edith Jacques, religious ed educator who could not be here, obviously because it is a holiday, wrote to us, on this day we remember with sadness the devastating loss of innocent lives taken from us by a small man who saw murder and death as an answer. We stand here today together in a firm refusal to respond with manipulation or hatred. Today we recognize that another small band has attempted to terrorize this country by threatening to burn a book held sacred by many in this room. Rabbi Jacques continues in her letter, it is surprising in this day and age to hear of a book burning of any kind, all the more so in our country which has a strong basis in religious freedom. The attention it has been given is problematic. I certainly agree with that. And a sad statement of the climate in our country. The times are tough. We all know that. However, it takes compassion, commitment, and hard work to bring people together to solve the problems of our age. And so, as Eric said, no matter what happens in Florida or New York, we do not think that one man's change of mind is the end of any of the problems that we face in the present age. We are here, therefore, in compassion and commitment to do the work, the beginning of the work for today, of bringing people together, the work of building bridges. We are here in peace. We are here in respect. My name is Ray Daniel. Assalamu alaikum to uh, those uh, 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 brothers and sisters of the Islamic faith here. Welcome to the Interfaith Solidarity Service on behalf of the Racial Diversity Task Force, the organizer of this service. A couple of media folks called us the other day to ask if the service is still on 
even though Terry Jones of Gainesville, Florida, called off his threat to burn copies of the Quran. We said the service is needed not just because of one incident, but because peace and harmony in our community are always important and cannot be taken for granted. Members of the Racial Diversity Task Force have realized that race and religion are often inseparable. So we have joined hands with organizations such as the Interfaith Association of Central Ohio, Interfaith Center for Peace, Council of American Islamic Relations, to bring people together across the racial and religious spectrum. For the last few months, we've been following the fake controversy of the New York Islamic Center. And when Terry Jones started surfacing in the media with his threats, you notice I don't use Reverend in front of his name, one of our members, Michael Dobson, sent an email around asking what we intend to do about this. With the blessings of our ministers and the board, we decided to do an interfaith solidarity service and started contacting our brothers and sisters of other faiths. Sister Zerka Abid worked tirelessly to publicize the event among our Muslim friends. The response from people of all faiths was amazing. This is inspired teamwork in the short span of two weeks. And everyone here is part of this interfaith team. Please give yourself a hand of affirmation. Um, our leader is uh, gesturing that people, if you could move in toward the middle and leave seats, aisle seats, uh, that would be great uh, for the people who are coming in. Uh, just trickle in. At the end of the service, there will be a snack reception in the fellowship hall. Uh, I don't know if you've seen all the bakala and all the good stuff, <laughs> uh, which is to your left as you uh, leave the worship center. There's also a literature table in that area where you can find out more details about our task force, as well as sister organizations like the Columbus Interfaith Youth Group. Two of the interfaith youth will be speaking here. Lastly, you may have seen a number of us here wearing yellow t-shirts that say, standing on the side of love. This is a movement to mobilize people of all faiths on justice issues, such as immigration and religious tolerance. Please consider becoming part of any of these organizations so we can build a greater Columbus community that is happy, healthy, and harmonious. God bless.
you are the best example of how we can finally achieve pluralism. Thank you for your support. Eric Brown, pastor of the Woodland Christian Church Disciples of Christ on the Near East Side of Columbus. Let me see how you would feel about this. Suppose I was to say that white Christians have no business building a church two blocks from the NAACP headquarters. <laughs> some men who call themselves Christians who belong to the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> People really need to consider the ignorance of trying to punish an entire religion for the crimes of a few who say that they belong to that religion. We can't punish all Muslims for the crimes of a few men who call themselves Muslims who flew planes into the World Trade Center. I follow a man named Jesus, who we claim to be Christ, who said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now what that means to me is that if you are not a peacemaker, then you can't call yourself a child. Another saying of Jesus is to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Or another way of putting it, which he also does is I treat others like you want to be treated. You don't want to be lumped and discriminated against and punished because of a few folks who claim to be in your group committing some heinous crimes. Don't do that to anybody else. Everybody in your claims to worship my tradition, God, is love. I regret the number of folk who call themselves Christians who aren't practicing love at the moment when it comes to Muslims who want to build mosques across this country. But the fact of the matter is that Christians are supposed to be practicing the art of love because that's who our God is. So let me just say, forgive us when we don't act like Oh, God. Um, Father Vinny McKiernan from the Catholic community at OSU, the Newman Center. I'm very honored and humbled to be among all of you. Actions speak louder than words. So what I say is not by way of boasting, but by way of saying, witnessing to what we have been able to do to show not just religious tolerance or interfaith dialogue, but to talk about interfaith cooperation. For four or five years at the university, we've had Catholic-Muslim dialogue that meet every week. Uh, faith Communities United for Peace is hosted every first Thursday of the month to pray for peace. And on several occasions, we have had speakers from CARE Ohio. Some years ago, Pakistani students came to us and asked if they could use our facility for their Friday prayer, and we said surely. However, they found our facility was not adequate enough. Just recently, some of our members went to Noor Mosque for a tour of that building. And then uh, Sayoto Foundation hosted uh, uh, the breaking of the fast at Ramadan at uh, Ohio Union. And again, our people were there. I was there at the State House some years ago when Sayoto Foundation hosted an interfaith uh, gathering. I say that not by way of boasting, but I, I say that uh, we're, we're trying to practice not just religious tolerance, but religious cooperation. And finally, I would like to say, as a native New Yorker, I look forward to when the Episcopal Church of St. Paul and the Roman Catholic Church of St. Peter's in Ground Zero area will be joining. <coughs>
community center, the mosque called Park 51.